right, the six o'clock hour is upon us. Uh, everyone, please rise for the pledge and remain standing for the prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Righteous Lord in heaven, we come to you in prayer this evening to give thanks for the many blessings that you've instilled upon us as individuals and as a community. We ask that you are with these individuals before you um, to guide their hearts, their hands, and their minds this evening so that your will will be done. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Jan, if you would, please take roll call votes. Okay. Uh, Brandon Helmore? Uh, present. Bob Lady? Here. Nathan Coughlin? Present. Tim Heiss? Here. Peter Frias? Here. All right. I trust that you've all had an opportunity to review the uh, consent agenda. If so, I would entertain any uh, a, a motion for acceptance. I will move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Okay. We have a first. Do we have a second? I second. Uh, all in favor say yay. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, de uh, uh, department reports. Um, as you can see, uh, Mayor Spence is not uh, with us this evening. Uh, he actually has a conflicting meeting in Muncie and is on his way back from that. I understand that he may be present before the end of the meeting, but in his absence, I'm uh, presiding over the meeting today. So, uh, department heads, do we have any? Reports from department heads? The, the department head meeting or the board of works meeting was fairly uneventful from the department heads. Uh, utilities are, are working as expected. Um, water lines, brush pickup, um, things of that nature. The sewage treatment plant was shut down for a little while today to uh, make some transitions and, and work on some. Uh, um, Manholes and police and fire really didn't have anything at all. So, all right, very good. Um, Clerk Treasurer, Jan, do you have anything no, this evening? I don't have anything today. All right, Council Members, uh, Tito, you want to start? Down sure. Um, had a, a concerned citizen reach out to me and uh, about a speed limit on West Vine Street. And so I'd like us to uh, consider uh, if we can uh, well maybe lower it. Uh, he says it's kind of a kind of a thin uh, street, uh, too many children playing, small area, uh, and it's just a, an accident waiting to happen. There have been close calls. What the is past. the speed limit? It's thirty right now. Uh, what street was that again? Vine Street. Yes, uh, here on the south side, West Vine Street. Yeah, that's probably where that goes it kind of changes and goes narrower at one mm -hmm. point and that's a real odd transition is that and something uh, you think that uh, i know kobe has put up those we, those we have done traffic studies on yeah. division street we've done it on hickory street we've done it uh, in the trailer park we've done it in different locations um this the speed limit is 30 mile an hour except in school zones in town um, what the traffic studies and what the recordings have shown is that for the most part they're, they may be speeding but it's not a great deal over what the speed limit is posted at. Um, we have done some research and have identified that speed bumps are more effective than lowering the speed limit 5 or 10 mile an hour. Um, if people are going to speed, they're still going to speed even if you reduce the sign you know, five or ten mile an hour. So um, we're we've got estimates. We're looking at some speed bumps on the vision and in the trailer park to slow vehicles down. Um, but we we haven't made a determination as to to how many or the exact location just yet. Primarily because asphalt was not readily available when we started looking at this prob uh, problem problem. And now it's becoming available, so it's going to be a project for later this spring or early summer that'll be um, 
add some speed bumps to our, our community. We're, we're really pretty happy to lower it, but I don't really think that that's going to slow people down. And, and it, a lot of times it ends up being a perception thing because when you're standing still and a car goes by you at 30 mile an hour or 20 mile an hour or whatever, it seems like it's going a, a lot of times a lot faster than it maybe really is. So we're kind of looking into it, looking at addressing it in different ways already. So we're happy to add Vine Street to that process if, if you guys want to do that. Yeah, I think, see, we lowered the speed limit in the trailer park at 25. What I believe was that we had to do it lower than that. Monty, didn't you have to do, what you, what was you had to do? A, yeah, the traffic study, study do a full-blown full traffic study if you yeah. make it lower yeah, than and that. We, we've used our camera, we've used our, you know, this is how fast you're traveling sign in multiple locations over different periods of times. We ran it over in the middle of the night, we ran it in the middle of the day, morning, noon, all different times. And, you know, it records the number of cars that go past and it records what they're traveling as far as the rate of speed. And, you know, it might be 32, it might be 35, it might be 28. It, they're not really speeding per se, it's just a matter of perception for perception. people standing in their yard or standing on the sidewalk. And we're looking at speed bumps to slow them down over changing the, the ordinance and the traffic signs. So, yeah, that would appreciate if we could add uh, Vine South or West Vine Street to that. I mean, it's just the density you know, and of, of the children in that neighborhood. I, I wouldn't concern. even know how you could get up to 20 on Vine Street. Yeah. 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 20, 20 to 25 yeah. would look fast on that right. section yeah. of street. Yeah. But we're happy yeah. to add that to the... So, the so I think the speed bump would probably be the... Just so council knows, they're about $2,500 a piece. You'd have to be... For the speed bumps, yeah, because we have to cut the pavement out, pull out the bad paper, the old pavement, and then pour the speed bump. So it's about $2,500 process per each speed bump. Mm. That's is it possible to get the, here's your speed, the sign that we have, the digital sign down there on Vine Street? Yeah, we can, we can post it down there. That's, that's a piece of cake to put it down there. It's not something that we leave overnight on yeah. a regular basis. Um, that sign was very cost effective for us to buy, even though it kind of bit when we took it out of the budget. To actually get one that's pull mounted, it's about $9,000. So, and I just, I just, the reason I throw that out there is because I just saw one on Greenville Pike over at the city limits of Winchester, and I was kind of shocked because I know how much they are, but they've got a pull mounted sign coming in off of Greenville Pike. Hmm. So, um, uh, another issue that uh, someone reached out to me about was the trash dumpster that is uh, located right here in front of the old apothecary shop building. I know it's there, I think must, maybe a provision corner work maybe yeah. I don't know why it's there uh, and it's I spoke to Monty there. and um, the, the issue is that where it was at and where it is again now um, it's too close a bit too close to the to the curb and so semi trucks do, wanting to do a right turn uh, from Pearl onto Columbia have a difficult time especially if there's traffic come on, coming the other way uh, with that dumpster there so what the individual suggested was, could we move it down uh, at least one parking space? That happened, but I see it's back. He also said that it's also possible if we would actually put it on Pearl, a semi truck would, would do better. Yeah, the, we, we had it moved up there, and then the guys doing the streetscape, it was in their so way. Oh. <laughs> so so, but I think they're done, so we can move it back up. Oh, okay. Or put it over on Pearl. Okay. Yes, please. We can. My guys are going to have the skid loader tomorrow. I can have them come up and do that yeah. tomorrow and push it back up, up the street. Yeah. And it, that, that's a loaded conversation, but it's actually where the state, when they did the 28 project, put the stop block for the southbound traffic on 28. That's the problem. Yeah. Because they moved it closer to the intersection. So now cars are rolling up to the crosswalk, which prevents the semis from swinging mm -hmm. wide. Right. Because yeah. before they did the 28 project, it was pushed back about a parking space, which allowed them to swing wide and make that yeah. turn. Yeah. It's a little bit more complicated. I mean, the dumpster is absolutely a problem. 
but it was a little yeah, bit that, more complicated. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That stop block is way, way in. Yeah, we, we had some complaints on that even before there were dumpsters on the street. Yeah. And it's because of where the stop block's at on the southbound lane. Then um, I've been having some conversations with people uh, about uh, uh, the, the old marker uh, at the border between the United States and the Indian Territory, <laughs> which, was, uh, which is on the, the west end of Harder Park. There is a marker on the south side of the park that's very nice, uh, but there used to be one on the north side of the park on Division Street. And so uh, I'm wondering if that's something that we could agree to, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a you know, a big plaque thing with, with a stone thing. It doesn't have to be that, you know, elaborate, but just kind of a marker uh, on where, on, you know, where, where the, on divisions, like we used to have on Division Street uh, for the, uh, for that border. Just a historic thing that, uh, you know, history buffs love. And I used to run over there and, Every time I would always stop by, stop and you know read that that particular marker there. I I only you know discovered that there's one on the south side of the park, but there was one also on the north side that's no longer there. And I'm wondering if we could put that up back up. That a department head? I don't know where that was. I don't know about that. Was it a that was a sign on the on the north side, wasn't it? Was it a yes? A, it was like a wooden structure, the, and it was painted green, and it was like a black. It was, there wasn't glass, but there was a, a plastic, and then there was just sort of a I think it was just paper on the inside. It was kind of low key and low budget. Uh, I think we could do better with not with not that much cost. Is that something that we might be open to? We could find we could figure out something to put up there. Sure. Okay. I don't know what happened to the original. I was wondering whether that was like a could have been a part of an Eagle Scout project yeah. or something yeah. like that well, at some point. But mm. That's pretty common. It might have been something like that that had gotten. If I compare a picture of it, I'll have it recreated. That's, that's not an issue. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll see if I can find the picture. <laughs> um, also, I. Um, I uh, working through and thinking through how the splash pad project should evolve, and so um, I spoke to a couple of, of people, and uh, and Bob expressed the idea that the splash pad. Should, well, just to put everybody on the same page, the current thinking is that it should be in the park, right next, right north of where the basketball court and the swimming pools concession area. So it would be right there in that area. But of course it kind of, the land kind of goes like this. But anyway, um, the idea was that the concern, and Bob, correct me because I'm expressing your idea here, uh, is that if the splash pad is on the outside, that may negatively affect, that would actually take away patrons from the swimming pool. And so it's an idea and a concern. Maybe it should be within the pool grounds. And then I spoke to Dennis Schweigert uh, about the piping, uh, 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 you know, in the park and thing, in the pool and things like that, and he said that we there, the piping for the baby pool and for that round <coughs> wading pool area is very old, and they've had trouble in the last several years with it and 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 upkeeping it, and so the idea we came up with was. Maybe we should just take those out and put the splash pad there. And so uh, after consulting with Chad, I uh, put it to the, uh, to the Board of Public Works. And so I'll hand off then to... <laughs> well, we, we had discussion about that. Of course, one of the things that, that is a, an issue with the type of system that we talked about with uh, continual flow of water as it ran was that We've got a single four-inch main that that runs to the to the park to the pool area, and if what size feet is that should a, uh, a splash pad have to you? Don't, have you I don't have that, that in my head. Well, okay. the, the 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 as an example, when Dennis fills the pool, refill or you know brings the pool up, and he turns on, he's got a, like a two-inch valve. 
uh, you basically lose water pressure to all the rest of the areas of the park. You can't okay. you can't flush a toilet in the park barn because okay. there's not enough pressure. So it's we would have to do to to use that kind of a system. We'd have to do a pretty serious upgrade, either at the very least loop in with the uh, main run into two on down 260 to Parkview at the very least, and then that's even probably questionable whether that's adequate. But uh, so we had the Board of Works had some discussion about it, and and I, matter of fact, I'm just going to let Steve reiterate what what the what our what we had in mind was uh, that we basically are uh, giving this to Steve to to work and take charge of initially uh, to look at the opportunities in terms of grant opportunities and so forth and work with and he can take it from there as far as what the it ba basically because of all the grants that we currently have in the hopper because of things that we've already started the process for applying for realistically this is probably a, a four to five year process to find grant funding to do something not necessarily because there's not a grant available but we may not be eligible to apply for it depending on which organization or agency is offering the grant because we've got something else in the works or back and forth so um i have already reached out to one of our grant writers to ascertain what the possibilities are to find funding for said project. Um, I really don't think um, looking at it any less than an overhaul of the existing pool pump and filtration system and you know updates to the pool and creation of Splash Park is the, the the right way to go if we're going to seriously consider this. But I think we have to do some homework and start talking to the right people about creating the plan so that we can become funded and eligible for some funding down the road. I, I think, and I've already reached out to them, so I, I would be expecting a reply back sometime later this week as far as what the steps are going to be and is there any immediate funding that we would qualify for or is it something that we're going to have to go to work and, and be a little bit patient until something's available for us? So at, I've actually talked to three communities that have installed these, one of which is right in the middle of installing right now. Um, they're all recirculated systems and they're not flow through systems. So, um, and, and Rushville is actually a, um, just left me. Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet filtration system, so, or sanitation system, so um, I think there's all kinds of options. I would hate to see us spend any amount of money without addressing the deficiencies of the pool. And, and effectively, the pool's been well maintained and managed, but the reality is everything in there is 50 to 70 years old. Yeah. And the newest is and, the, and the, uh, the one yeah. thing that we all that we all kind of came to arrive at the same conclusion of is that particularly for grant funding to help with the, the pool renovation by having the new feature of a of a splash park a splash pad uh, that puts us in the where we're not just asking for money to renovate something that we've had and just not spend our own money on we're we're in it's an enhancement so we can help our renovation by tagging it in with this with this project and integrating them together I think we could do I'm anxious to see what other you know what designs we can come up with just from the standpoint of like uh, if we integrate it into where that uh, baby pool is or in, into that area you could have a system where you could have it available to the pool patrons but then also on say when the pools closed it could be open Gated off. Gated nice off. Gated off yeah. You can gate the pool That's a good off idea. where you can yeah. get in and, and you could control the you could control it really about any way you want it to. Yeah. That's a good idea. And and uh, then it's not then it's not a detraction from the pool, it's an and it's an added attraction. Traction. But it's also available otherwise. Yeah. So and we can and that's something that as we go through this we can be can be pretty flexible on too. Yeah, and it, right. it would be my plan is as we realize what is available to us as a community, 
then that's when we actually form yeah. committees to do the research and do the planning and, and all that. But I, I, I think we have to know what can be done and, and what's available to us before we get too deep into this conversation. That works. Okay. You got anything else? I don't have anything else for yeah, more work. I'd say that's uh, he, he works it better than I do without that works. A <laughs> uh, couple things of what's going on. Plum Street is underway. We're waiting for the engineering work. That should take about 12 weeks. Um, talk to Mike uh, Bruns. Bruns. I don't know how to pronounce Bruns. it. Bruns. It says it's, it pronounces it different than it's spelled. Um, uh, Moat Associates is supposed to have some information. A meeting with us next week to give us a little bit of an update. Um, May 22nd, reminder, put this on your calendar. Uh, actually, Tito has, has set up a, an interested Facebook group, um, an event for May 22nd, the Community Cleanup Day. <coughs> it is the correct day, right? 22nd. Yes, the 22nd is the correct day. Um, I've worked with Brad and had some conversations with him. We're working on some different things that would could, would and could be improved around downtown and work our way out towards the park, state line, and south side of town. Um, the the conversation I had with Brad today is actually community cleanup day. He's working to get a, a group of city people that will take the truck around town with a lift, um, whether it's the Bobcat or um, the backhoe, and be able to lift stuff and put it in dumpsters that is eligible. Um, there will be somebody at the south side of town being able and making sure that the items that want to be disposed of are eligible. Um, no full paint cans, no oil. Uh, no TVs, um, with no refrigerators with Freon in it, no freezers. Um, that's just the, the start of it. There's going to be people that work with the city that know that uh, and know what is allowed. There are other disposal sites such as Pollution, Pollution Solutions in Winchester that you can take tires and paint and uh, TVs and other electronics uh, any other time. And with the conversation I also have with Brad today is dumpsters will be at the south side of town only because if those items get thrown into dumpsters all throughout town, the city can be hit with a huge fine later and we won't be able to continue to be able to offer these uh, cleanup days to everybody in town. So we'll be at the south side of town that whole day. He'll have uh, somebody there to make sure and help lift in if need be. Um, also the conversation sounds like then two weeks later, so then the uh, 22nd, and then it's Memorial Day, and then the weekend after. Um, for everybody that goes garage sailing during Memorial Day, if you don't sell everything that you want to, that following weekend there will be dumpsters available again. We won't be doing the community cleanup, but dumpsters will be available if you want to get rid of stuff. Um, so slowly but surely going along, hoping for good weather that day. If you guys are available, that would be great. And if anybody out there wants to come and join us, where the plan is to meet at the community room at 10 a.m., and then we'll kind of um, form some teams and move out from there. Um, Nate, the, we're working with ordinance officer also to maybe locate or identify a couple of houses that need some assistance. Perfect. So we probably won't announce that prior so, to, but yeah, the day of we may have, have some that different information things. for that day. Perfect. Um, the other thing is Keith Payne. I'm excited for the Oak Street um, addition, a couple houses that are to be built. He's supposed to be here any minute. When he gets here, we'll, uh, we'll get him slated to talk after the Kubinskis and hear what's going on with the Oak Street houses. Um, other than that, I feel like everything's moving pretty smoothly. If you have questions, concerns, as always, come to the council meeting and, or seek us out afterwards. All right, Bob? Uh, I'm good tonight. I don't have anything. All right. The only thing that I have is the, uh, the, the rock house is actually nearing completion. Um, we actually have a purchase agreement with the buyer. I believe it's a, a, an official purchase agreement in place with the buyer. And uh, they're wanting to take possession before the end of May. Um, I, I'm asking for a, a volunteer call out, actually. Um, as we're preparing to, <clears throat> for the drywaller to come in next week, uh, we have some work that needs to be done ahead of time, uh, hanging furring strips. Um, getting out any additional um, debris and trash from the place. I'm actually going to be there from 5 to 7 tomorrow evening. So if uh, there's any volunteers, stop by. We've got a, um, you know, some, some power drills, a drill, a driver, and, you know, bring it out. Uh, you know, we can, we can use some extra hands. So, um, like I said, a volunteer call out for tomorrow. Um, next on the agenda, city manager. Monty, did you have anything? Uh, Particularly, we uh, 
looking to close out the Columbia Street uh, project. It's just a matter of uh, paperwork for that to uh, close out that sidewalk project. Um, working on the, uh, finally have an agreement with the railroad for the Jackson Pike project. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get started with the right of way uh, acquisition on that and uh, environmental, uh, getting the environmental uh, clearance done on it. Uh, notified today about uh, the state budget. There's quite a bit of funding that's been put into the state budget for infrastructure needs, some, some law enforcement costs, and uh, uh, small business uh, uh, support in there mostly comes from the state's uh, American Rescue Plan fund. So, so we'll be keeping an eye on that to see, you know, what what funding agencies will be dealing with that. Martin, when you mentioned the the railroad, are you talking about it making it so semis can go uh, down under that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They have that project. So. Is that slated for 2021 or is that 2024? Okay, that's what it was. Okay. But right away and stuff like that, all the funding prep work. will be released in 2022 to to pay for those okay. those costs. So I know that's going to be helpful for a lot of people accessing Frank Miller that oh, way yeah. and yeah. trying yeah. to bypass town. And it'll be uh, it'll be helpful for like Kearns Brothers there and mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, so we'll be able to have a lot of direct route line to get semis into those, that area. Good. So. Yeah. And uh, working with the uh, Indiana Department of Economic Development in putting the uh, industrial park road through. Oh, good. To 700. So we're going to work with the uh, with Randolph County. It will actually have to be part of that process because they own they own that property in the yeah. back there. So moving forward with that. All right. Thank you, Monty. Steve, did you have anything else to add? Okay. I've talked enough. <laughs> uh, city manager, right? Did you have anything? Uh, well, I mean, can I do my? Can I do the old business? I don't really have any. Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, the code enforcement ordinance update. I'm continuing to work on that to get to make sure that we're meeting all the state, the, you know, minimums, the state minimum uh, statutes. So I'm working on that, and then house condemnations that are going forward. Uh, I had been approached by a couple of homeowners about who are defendants in, in the cases who would like to you know, work on their homes, which I won't mention this in a public forum because that is considered uh, open litigate, ongoing litigation. Uh, but that's something that I'll probably need to address with the mayor. Um, I mean, I take that as a good sign in, in, in many ways because you have someone. The one house is fixed up. That was the whole. Yeah, thing right, right, so. right, right. Yeah. So, um, and that's good. And then there's some folks that just haven't, I just haven't heard from at all, okay. and they're proceeding into court. So, um, question in regards to the the first part of the ordinances. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you'll have that to us by next council? I want to be able to everybody yeah. get it, review it over yeah, the two weeks, so maybe by June we'll make some changes sure. if. if it's warranted, so cool. That's all I have. All right. I think that takes care of our old business then. And we can go back up to uh, presenters on the agenda. We've got uh, Mr. Jim Dubensky to present about State Line Heritage Days. Is uh, Mr. Dubensky present? Yeah. I'm here for State Line Heritage Days. I'm Jim Dubensky. I'm the parade chairman. I was here last year to talk to you guys about the parade. Well, we've got the parade back on normal route, of course, because Columbia Street's back to normal. So that's great. And I was here last year and I talked to you guys and you guys gave me a lot of feedback about what you guys would like to see back for Heritage Days and you guys all really put a lot of input about like you'd like to have the go-karts back. Well, we all know that's not going to happen. Our streets aren't good enough for that. And after that, I got home enough. I spent the whole year thinking, I'm like, wow, we really need to get some activity on this, on the, on the festival. And I thought, oh, there you know, the COVID is something at home thinking about it, you know. What can we do to get some activity and get the crowd back in Union City beside the festival and the rides? And so I really started thinking and started looking, and I hit Goldmine. 
I got a BMX crew coming from New Jersey. Oh, wow. Cool. And uh, poor Steve and Kobe's got their hands full. We've got a BMX crew coming from New Jersey. They're going to set up on Pearl Street from Columbia Street to Fletcher. And they're coming out of New Jersey and they're bringing like seven haulers with them. <laughs> and uh, cool. they're going to stir up a lot of commotion in Union City. Sorry. <laughs> but you guys asked me for a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so in return, I did it. And they're not go-karts, but these guys bring BMX bikes. Yeah. And they jump quite high in the air, and they do a lot of stunts, and they do a lot of commotion. And they also teach the kids about bullying. They're not all here just to do stunts. Yeah. They're going to talk to the kids about bullying. They're going to educate the kids. They're going to tell the kids just because they could do this, not to go out and try to do it themselves. Uh, they're going to give bikes away. They're going to oh. give shirts away. Uh, they're going to work, talk to the kids, you know. It's a really good program. Uh, I think it's a great program. They're costing us a lot of money to bring them in, to get them here. Uh, and we're out, basically, the reason I'm here is, is basically to let you guys know they're coming to town and it's going to stir up a lot of commotion into town. We've got a lot, when they come to Union City, they bring a lot of media with them. They bring a lot of crew. They bring a lot of traffic with them. And so I've already talked to Steve. I talked to Chad, he came down to the house, and I've already promoted, talked to Chad and Steve. So we know what's going on. But I came to the council meeting to let you guys know what's going on, to let you know that it's, it's going to happen. They will be here on Friday, Friday. August 6th, that evening, for a show. Uh, it's, it's an hour show. It's costing us $2,000 out of the committee. Statement Heritage Days is we're all a nonprofit. We go out and we do things. We work all year round. We used to just meet and only do things during the festival time. And we decided that it's time for us to go all year round and do the cookie walk. We did things in the park. We go and do things all year round now. We're just a committee, that, a group that works all year round to do fundraisers to try to raise money. And that's what we've been doing. Uh, we work with Frank Miller. They've been working with us back and forth. We've been working with different organizations to try to raise money. So. Uh, Question. Anything, anything that the city can do in return to help us make this happen as a donation, we appreciate it. It's like I said, we don't know what the city can do, can't do, but a donation toward the State Line Heritage Days, we would greatly appreciate it. Is it possible to have them do a show on Saturday too? Have what? Them do a show Saturday too? No, because they're already booked out. When they leave on front, when they leave us on Friday, they're headed to the Fort Wayne War College, War War, the War War Coliseum, to do okay. a big show up there. So we I was it? able to get them booked on Friday. Just lucky. Can we extend it more than an hour show? Do what? Can we extend it more than an hour show if we have? We got we got them a forty-five minute show. Okay. And uh, I mean, we could probably get a longer show that night if we we show them more money. You know, <laughs> I mean, they're here to stay. Yeah. I mean, we've got them. They're going to be here. They're, they're bringing trailers with them. They're bringing a Kellogg's trailer. Uh, ESPN will follow with them. Uh, help me out, There's Diane. Um, sponsors that Their sponsors sponsorships for, follow them along. Like Walmart. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, D.A.R.E. program is involved. Perfect. And that's where I don't know if we, there's funding for that, you know, if that's something we can look into. Can we're I working see with the brochure? Sheriff's Departments because they have a D.A.R.E. program, and so we're working with them. Let them pass that down and let them all look at this. This is their flyer from last year. They haven't got a new one made up yet, but this is their current one. Let them look at what they do. Them, Just got a part their, of it. I'll you'll start see this their stunts one this way. and their, their setup and is what they're going to set up out here I'll on the this stage. Down here, here and we can kind of do. meet. So uh, it's quite. It's going to be quite a show. It's a big show. We're just really lucky to get them, and all the bike shops are from Richmond. And these are the sponsors uh, that will, the, ones the ones that are circle will be coming with They're going to start donating. Okay. So this is a huge event. They now they have they more donate, than just the, bi the, the, the BMX the bikes. They also have out. motorcycles. But where's It's going to put from? Union City on the back, big time. Uh, Columbia yeah. to Fletcher. Columbia to Fletcher, okay. So it's really going to congest this area. Yeah, we're going to set it up around here. 
right out here on Pearl Street. And from then Columbia to once they, you, you get to see some of it, you know, video, because we are first time doing this, route, you know, we're, we're said, one time, perfect. but you know, the more money we raise for next year and get these on board, you know, it's just, you know, with COVID, you know, and everything, you know, they got motorcycles, you know, they do those kind of things. And, and you know, they're going to, they're going to talk to, they've got their own sound systems, their electric side of the He's going to take care of them trailers for me. <laughs> it is going to be amazing, and we yeah, this is going to be really cool. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. Yeah, we it's going to be a big show. It's something you guys wanted go karts. I couldn't get you go karts. I'm getting you BMX bikes. This is the best I can do. Is this something to to put out there to kind of see you know more money that we can raise for next year? Because you know we have to have a certain amount with 30 or 60 days before the event. It's a $500 deposit. They have to have, or they'll cancel us. Yeah, we've got Even one, one day late. Right now. We have to have that money up this front one? and get this done. Pardon me? Is it this one? Uh, there's it's three the options. BMX one. The, the BMX, BMX, BMX one. The one. Right. Yes. They do a motorcycle show, but that's more money, of course. Right. And that's something next year, that we, we can look maybe at maybe we get maybe enough sponsors year. for next year. They see you this year's show. Next year, maybe we can get them yeah. automatically book them for next year. Cool. So you said the BMX uh, show that you booked was two thousand dollars. Yeah, yes. this year it's costing. How much is the, the the motorcycle? I'm it? not exactly sure because he's he's given us a little bit of a break because they're they're what they want to do, and I'm going to work with the police chiefs. They want to they want to jump they want to jump the state line. They want to do a <laughs> they want to jump cool. the state line. They think it's a real cool video. If they could jump the state line, so they could say they jump, it, it, it jump from Indiana into Ohio. It's not really a big deal, but they think it's really cool. <laughs> Indiana, <laughs> Ohio, it's like right there. Yeah. I said, I'm sure we can make it happen. You know, so yeah, because they want to do a video. You know, in their because they, they do a lot of videos for MTV and they do a lot of videos for ESPN. They would thought that'd be a neat video or commercial that they did a, a jump from in, from Indiana into Ohio, and then within seconds they did it back into Ohio. And did, did, did. I'm like, hey, we can make it happen. You just talk to us, you know. So, but I thought it was a really neat thing we made was able to bring them to Union City, you know. And I thought I I know you guys gave me a challenge and you told me one to go karts. I can't get go karts. Sorry. But I got the BMX guys <laughs> here, to, and I thought this was really a really cool show to put together. And these guys are going to talk with the kids, and they're going to give bikes away. They're going to give lots of shirts away, oh, and, uh, and they're going. Oh, it, it's a really good show. Good they performed at Disney World. Uh, you can go to their website and watch their video, and they talk to you and they explain all the shows they've put on. So, this is what happens when you're bored. You're locked in during lockup. You can't know what to do. You know. I get on my computer and I'm like, huh, what can I get in Union City here? So, are there still going to be concerts this year? Do what? Yeah. Concerts Friday night, Saturday. Yeah, we're still going to have that. This is we're trying to squeeze this in. And yeah. I told Jan I had this coming. She's like, when are we going to use these people? I said, I'll get them. Yeah. Just don't worry, Jana. Calm down, girl. We got I get Jana all fired up. She's like, I don't know about you, Jana. <laughs> just sell them, Jana. I, I got it covered. I got it covered. <laughs> so just uh, a thought. What is your finances like for State Line here? Is well, we are all, like I said, we're all nonprofit. We get all help from Frank Miller, of course, you know, and we go out all year round raising money. We do the Christmas walk. We did the cookie walk at the Oaks. We did... You know, we do a lot of stuff Don't to raise money balance. all year round. Right. We'll raise the money. We used to just raise money three months out of the year, six months out of the year, and I, I finally got to the committee and said, "Hey, if we're going to do this, we're going to stay active. We're doing this year round. We're going to get involved and do stuff all year round and get involved." So we do get, we do get a lot of grants. We do get a lot of money from grants from you know from Randolph County, and we get a lot of donations from the places here in town. But this is a big hit for us to put two thousand sure, dollars out sure. beside our entertainment that we hit, you know. So we figured, let's do it. And Janet's looking at me like, "Where are you getting this money from?" Mm -hmm. I'll find it. We'll you figure know. it out. When I needed the money for my radios to put the prey together, I found it. I told her I'll get it. So I told her I'll go around and I'll get it. And I've been to Frank Miller. I've been to a couple other places, and we're getting it little by little. But we'll get it, and these guys will come. I promise you. But that's why I'm here tonight to tell you guys we'll get them here. But uh, it'll be a good show. 
We don't have anything set in stone for the deposit yet. So we're working diligently with Frank Miller has assured me that the, we'll, we'll, they'll be here. But they we'll don't. Be, I've no talked to Frank Miller, and they're pretty much assured. But they said to keep going around getting your donations, keep working. You know. Oh, and so you don't. I wanted you guys aware of what you was don't going have on the money yet before all these people right? start showing yeah. up, and they're like, "Why didn't you tell us about this?" You know. I wanted you guys aware of what was going on. I've already told Chad, and I've told everybody else. But could you but email it. the website so we could potentially post it on our Facebook page? Sure. Or sure, sure. get it put out there one way. Yeah, it'll be in the flyer too, and our we our, our brochure. Will, you know, our, for the state line here, you know, all the information will be in there too. Okay. That'll go to print. I think the fifth of June, and then the brochure will come out of two weeks after that. You leave. So. Well, they have their own like publicity team that they have and they put out all different all around the country of these places that they go as soon as and we get our deposit paid you didn't say you'll hit the we'll be in there and then they'll start doing advertising and then they'll send segments to like our local media like channel 7 channel 2 any of our local media that they'll be in Union City they'll take care of our advertising for us we don't have to do any advertising that's part of our package so they'll advertise it for us. So, but it's like I said, it's we're not asking for any. I'm not asking for a certain amount. It's whatever the city can do to help us. You know, this is what we're bringing to Union City for Heritage Days, and we're going to make it happen. So, so any, any thoughts about a contribution towards this? I mean, maybe the 500 for the deposit. Yeah, or? I think we should. Jan, if we propose yeah. some funds, do you have somewhere it could potentially come from? Yeah. Okay. Well, if we do the 500 and get that covers the deposit, and then we can, then we can go from there. I mean, that takes care of the immediate. And this is state line heritage days, right? Yes. So are you going to the Ohio yeah. side, yeah. side yeah. as well? Or, yeah. Um. I, I, well, most of it's handled on our side. Yes. So, you know, the check would have to go to Jana. Jana for yeah. state line heritage days. But they're jumping into Ohio, though, right? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> we they have their own insurance. Yeah. They, they have, have their own, own policy. Their own they're policies. covered themselves for everything they do yes. in Union City. Yeah. I mean, we have all that yep. available at home to what, show you. What's the total something. cost? Total cost $2,000. Can we be the main sponsor and put a big old flag brought to you by that flag right there, brought to you by Union City? We, we you can do whatever that. you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I would That's say thank you way. to everyone involved. <laughs> Jim's Auto Detailing will probably be a part of that because we're working our butts off. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's not all for us, but you know what I'm saying? It's, I'm just the French, I'm just the French chairman, but I've stuck my neck out to just go further because. State Line Heritage Days is my is my heart, you know. I just I'm I push for this. Yeah. I guess I'm doing everything I can to keep it alive. Right. Brandon, thank you by the way for yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass the gavel back to So do we have a motion on the floor? I move that we put a thousand dollars towards this so other people are still encouraged to donate. We've got a first. Do we have a second? I appreciate that. Thank I'll you very it. much to all of you. I'll say Bob second. We're gonna make this Name happen. Motion. If Bob it doesn't second. come back. <laughs> if you would like to stop down and see some paperwork that oh, we I'm have gonna Google on it after this. I'm excited. And some of the things <laughs> that they have that yeah. they're going to do for us, stop on down. Jan, if you would, roll call vote. Brandon Elmore. Yes. Bob Lay. Yes. Nathan Conklin. Yes. Tim Heiss. Yes. Tito Frias. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, all. guys. We are so pumped. I uh, also want you guys all to know my grand opening for my business is June 5th. <laughs> And you're all invited down yes. for values. Tacos will be there. Nice. And Kix96 nice. will be there. And my boss will be there. So it will be all kinds of free stuff being given is that, away. Is that your boss? No. <laughs> Carbright. Carbright I'm, I'm the boss. other boss. How's that? So, That's still probably good. Ian and Carbright will be yeah, there. Right. Yes. And they'll still be there. Your house. Stuff. A lot It'll of free be at stuff. Our house. Your house. Yes. Okay. I didn't so know if you feel free to come down. Move the county commissioners will be there. Or not. So we would not invite out. So. Yes. So come on down and get some tacos, and the Girl Scouts will be there giving snow cones away. And it's going to be a really good time. So. It's going to be probably like an hour, two, maybe three. We've talked with Steve about our little section of the street being 
closed off because Velia's will draw some major attention down the <laughs> area. She yeah. is wonderful. If you and we're tacos. so we're so blessed that she agreed to help us. Yeah. So Good. that'll be June fifth, one o'clock. Yeah, I'd love to have all you guys there. Yes. Sit from the city council yes. come down. We are definitely you guys have all been helpful. Yeah. Cities the all everybody from the city utilities has been very helpful. I know yes. I'm not a downtown business, but I'm I do a lot of business, a lot of business. I'm booked all the way at the end of May. I'm, I'm pushing first of June for customers. So Good. we stay extremely busy down there. Well, and the new building gets really busy. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. We are. All those, we need to keep moving because we've got a right. tour that we're hoping to do afterwards. Okay. So Perfect. Thank you so much. I get that information. Uh, one, well, probably one on each end. That's there. okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. If you got any questions, you don't stop down. Okay. We'll get you information you need. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Where you go? Um, Keith Payne, we have here from ARHI Building and Remodeling. And um, did you want me to just turn it over to you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, just c coming in to give you guys an update. Obviously, this has been a little bit of a long stretch, but where we are currently, the the plans are done. We've had Moat uh, deal with giving us the survey. Um, we've requested for the survey for the lot to be staked for the house that we've got ready to file permits on. Um, and we're anticipating once they stake it, which hopefully will be this week, because I copied you on, on that, that we can be able to pull permits. Funding's already in place. So moats are actually staking? Okay. okay. Yeah, so I think I emailed them last. It was last week. They were hoping to get it done this week. So, I mean, we're extremely excited to to get this, to get it done. Because I the, the temperature within the real estate market, I think, is very good. Unfortunately, prices are going, it's a bit scary. I mean, if anybody knows about buying lumber, I mean, OSB <laughs> has gone from $7 that I had to get five sheets last night, and it was $39 a sheet. So... Uh, you know, for Indianapolis, it's not too bad, but for within Union City, there there is a threshold of where, you know, where we need to stay within price of the house. But I mean, you know, you guys have been extremely supportive, which I appreciate. Um, I'm committed to this, so we're just going to try to, you know, keep costs as manageable as possible and build it. But the house is really a beautiful home. It has a porch. It's set up so that um, there's a porch on the front, a porch on the back. I, would, I wanted to print the prints, but I got out of uh, uh, our project late and couldn't get the Kinkos to print it. But I, I'd be more than happy to send it to you, Nate, so that way you can share yeah, it. Yeah, I'll pass it along. Um, but there's a porch on the front, a porch on the back, and there's a carport. But it's a three-bedroom, 1,200 square feet, um, and it's been designed around where I know heavy demand is across the board because if you do a two bedroom it'll sell but resell on that tends to kind of not be as well so we've done a three bedroom so somebody can have an office up front because of covid you know more people are working from home so we've kind of taken that all into consideration some of the special features on it uh the first floor is nine foot you know i so i didn't i didn't i designed the house how i do my custom home so i'm probably over designing it but we're gonna have to keep the cost down um, as far as on labor by using uh, fewer people versus trying to do it within you know a month because I tell people all the time what you what you save in money um, you're going to spend in time and what you save in time you're gonna spend in money so to go fast you're gonna spend a lot of money to mm -hmm. get it done but I'm not saying this is gonna take six months I'm anticipating it being probably three three and a half months but nine foot ceilings, uh, we have um, you know granite tops going in there, uh, tile flooring, tile on the bathrooms, because I've come up through doing a lot of remodeling. Um, I know kind of the areas of where to kind of get the wow factor and also the value. So uh, it'll be a slab uh, that'll help uh, save there. The house will sit you know roughly about 18 inches above the ground, so you're, you're looking down versus it just sitting flat. So, um, I mean, otherwise, that's where we're at. I mean, I've got a construction uh, management team ready to go. 
so that way, uh, as it starts, um, it will stay moving because instead of me trying to come here, you know, I have a team in place so that way the foundation gets dug. Uh, we'll deal with the sanitary, which is a plus. Sanitary is on the south side of the property and the water is on the north side. So we'll probably have to deal with boring or across, which won't be a big deal. But, you know, we're just ready. You know, it was kind of a, a tough spot going through last year as many people uh, had, had happened. I mean, we've been blessed to make it through it and stay busy. Uh, but now things are really kind of really picking up extremely for us. So um, the excitement's still there on my side. I'm, I'm very, very anxious to deliver something because I know how big this is for the city. So um, yeah, kind of I'll be honest, just having sure. you here is, is really appreciated. It yeah. really is. And, and um, because as you imagine, well, are you from, I don't remember asking you before, are you from a small town originally? No, I'm from Indy. Okay. Uh, it's just okay. some of my, my wife's, some of my wife's family uh, is from, uh, uh, I think it's not Whiteland, but it's uh, Whitewater. This is over there south of me. Union yeah. County. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. So, well, then uh, they can relate. Then in a small town, word travels fast and time moves really slow. Right. <laughs> so, so when something doesn't get done, what would be two months in Indianapolis is like six months here. You know? <laughs> and so, yeah. So, um, so that's why I really appreciate you being here. Now you said mentioned permits. What what is the time frame you had to if you had to guess? Yeah, I'm I'm now I don't know your timeline, but I'm sure your timeline is not anywhere like Indianapolis. I mean Indianapolis is just running unbelievably slow. I mean on I'll, new homes. I'll send you Randy's number right now. Yeah, that would be good. Texas I don't think you'll run into a problem. As I said, we shouldn't time. have much delay there. Probably no, five maybe. ten days maybe. Yeah. I mean maybe uh, that tops. Yeah. But when I built mine, Chad, I literally went to the office. I showed Randy the plan and then walked out with the plan. Yeah, it perfect. Yeah. Literally perfect. the same thing. So yeah. probably a phone call and a, and a fax or a you know, scan of an email and that would be suffice. Yeah, because I already have the site plan. We have the cool. building plans. Um, we have uh, you know all the detailed cross sections for the roof, the walls, all, everything I know everybody else needs. But that really is it. Awesome. Um, we're, awesome. we're set to go, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm anxious to go. Matter of fact, uh, I mean, if, I need to, if you need me to come back on the next month, I'm fine. I mean, hopefully we'll be started by then. Oh, so, so if you're started... You break ground, don't waste time coming to a council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm committed to this because, you know, my wife's family, uh, I mean, they're, they're aging, but they're super excited. I get asked that probably more times than us talking, Nate. <laughs> You know, have you started the house yet? No, we're not taking so long. You know, you know so we're, we're anxious. I, I think I think it'll be a very good statement because you know I don't build low end houses and I can't I just can't build cheap. I'm not going to build expensive, but it's going to look nice. Right. No, Especially if I'm going to be associated with it, we're it's going to be a statement. So that way, word word travels. It'll yeah. travel quickly, and hopefully the house sells quickly, and we'll yeah. keep going. Now, I'm going to the deal. Do we need to get started on the berm behind? I don't think anything can be it's done not, with the berm until the houses are done. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not a big rush. I okay. mean, the house, the, the landscape there, I think, is uh, is suitable. The new home being there, plus some vegetative fencing I'll do around it, um, will carry itself. Okay. There's no need in bearing any expense on that yet. I wouldn't even really recommend it until probably we're three houses down the road. Okay. I did get the tax bill. Cool. So I ended up, you know, sending that in so that will cool. property tax and stuff like that. My and guess is once we are trying to move some of the dirt from the wastewater plant, we could mm -hmm. potentially move it there. There you go. Yeah. I just like to be bracket with that. And yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, how soon are you trying to move the dirt from the wastewater? Is it ready to go or is it? Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect anything we're yeah. So no, I mean it's we're, we don't so, have a, so is the contractor moving? Is that something that the city's burdened with? I think we're just yeah. making piles out there. I don't yeah. know. Monty, did you? Yeah, that'd be. I'm sure it'll be us. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah then I, it'd be better. I think just it's not going to hurt anything, and it's not needed. Gotcha. So okay. I'd say let us get the first one done, sell it. You know, get the next one going, and maybe even buy the third one. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Because people will be fine knowing we're going to put a burn here and mm -hmm. such and such. Parking and equipment purposes, the city owns the property to the south? 
Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's where the berm will be. But for the time being, for parking, equipment, trailers, whatever, yeah. that's probably better for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure people can visualize too what will be behind them when they scope out the house. Yeah. My my only hopes is that where the sewer is, which I know it's to the south of the property, that I don't know if that's clay tile. I suspect it is because you know, um, I mean, I think we've re. We've removed money or lined all of the clay tile in town? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. yeah. Even alongside where, where you're at now? Where I'm at, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we'll have to look. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal. This is clay tile is a lot more sensitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you got to be real careful because if you hit it wrong, it'll crack and the crap will run, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. much further than you try to get to the next section. If you're not correct, it cracks again. Yeah. So before you know it, so that's my only concern if there's any, but um, you know, we'll just have to be careful um, as it goes. Question yes, for sir. those of us who are less informed, what is berm? A just, that's a fair question. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a mound, you know, so you, when you berm something, you may have a flat ground like this. And so what they're talking about, the dirt from the wastewater, They'll dump it here and it'll end up looking like clumps, but you usually like a run a D4 along it so it's a nice general, you know, like when you go to a golf course. Yeah. Mm. You know, you see those hills, course. grass those hills. Are, those are typically considered berm in the development business or landscape. Uh -huh. So some trees on a, like an inclined ground, you've got a little bit of a natural barrier. It creates a buffer between that exactly. and the industrial and area right, there. Exactly. Yeah. And it's both. Uh -huh. and it, one of the things it'll do too is, is be a sound barrier. Yes. Uh, which, which, considering the railroad and everything, that's going to be helpful for immediately and the rest of the neighborhood, or some of the other neighborhood. But, and a lot of times people will plant shrubs, mm -hmm. you know, along it, which would be something I'd be interested in yes. seeing happen. You do some shrubs and then do a wood fence in a section, and then more shrubs, mm -hmm. a wood fence, and then in front of that where the houses are. It's good to kind of put keystone block there and put mulch and some flowers. So when somebody's looking at the berm from their house, you have kind of a landscaping, uh, you know, an attraction versus just looking at a flat barren area. Mm -hmm. right. So the and that would be plus. that would be to the south of the it. south. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, by the oh my alley. God. Back right. Next side of the alley. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, and I'm anxious to work with you guys. So as, as it gets to that point of berming. Because instead of just running a straight berm, it's good to kind of just get it so it has contour. some texture, contour yeah. to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Cool. And if, if whoever's running the equipment, you know, I'd be happy to help them, you know, let's kind of do this here and let it come here. So that way you're, you're, you're creating more of a, an attractive landscape. And so as people are driving down the street, it's not just the houses they see behind it. You see the nice berm, you see, you know, the trees, the fencing. So it, it just collectively makes it look better and it adds more value that's awesome that's awesome, that's awesome. thanks for questions? coming thank you yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you guys i mean uh and i'll, I'll you know, if you need me to come back next month let me know i mean hopefully we're started by then mm -hmm. so i'd be happy to say here's pictures here's the foundation this is what <laughs> and even do a tour so That'd be yeah. awesome yeah. trust me we'll probably have pictures for you if it's already started <laughs> <laughs> there'll be people driving by yeah and, we're pretty anxious yeah. we're pretty yeah, anxious that's awesome. so uh, yeah. super thank you any other questions if not, um, thank you, Keith. Really. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys possibly right. next month. Let That's me know. Good. Sounds, sounds good. good. Okay. All right. Have a good it sounds like a funny yeah. bit, too. So I hope I may be here. Anyway, thanks, you guys. Thanks. See you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, code enforcement, ordinance update. We already went through those, actually, when Pricky was up. Oh, cool. Okay. So <laughs> you took care of condemnations then, too? Uh, next council meeting, he's going to give us an uh, update on the ordinances. He needs to double-check a couple more things. Okay. And then house condemnations, he's going to get with you on a couple. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So we'll move into new business then, the facade grant request uh, for Mr. Tony Gates <coughs> and Ms. Delia Contreras. Um, Trust you have a chance to review those. Do you, yeah. Do you wanting to address anything in particular? I know nothing about either one of them. Okay, so. cool. That's fine. I just noticed you were looking at me. That's why you know you're ready to talk. Ignorance is bliss. Okay. <laughs> so I'm curious, Jan, did these come in through you? Um, no. They've given to me and I put them in your packet. Okay. okay. Well, they turned them in to me. 
Monty, can you speak to anything? The uh, well, the, the grant request is you know, in your packet there. So, well, Tony's was um, his. His is mostly is the brick. The brick like work tuck pointing and is, yeah, yeah, hard to metal. He had significant tuck pointing done. Well, yeah, him and Todd Landis have been working side by side on tuck pointing. Um, not so much the, the actual museum space, but more the offset area where the front porch is and all the farm equipment. That whole wall basically top, top to bottom, uh, east to west, needs to be tuck pointing. Um, it, it's got some significant issues that Todd thinks he can um, get up there and tuck point the whole thing and, and fix the deficiencies. And I think the lintel know about that. The, the lintel needs to be replaced mm -hmm. or yeah, repaired mm -hmm. because it's rusted out. Yep. Yeah, that was pretty pretty sketchy. Been been pretty sketchy for a while. So sorry. What is tuck pointing? Basically, where you go back in and put new Ground. mortar in the in the spaces yeah. between the bricks. Uh, and actually, yeah. cut out. They do a lot of cutting out and grinding out of the, yep. of the weak mortar and then then refill it. <coughs> oh wow! Yeah. Basically, yeah. as water runs down the brick wall, it just yeah. washes all that old mortar out of those spaces. Yeah. And, and that work has not been done, right? This no. is in the no. retroactive grant where the uh, for Delius, that facade has already been done. It was done yeah. last summer, right? I we had just some hesitation about a project, you know, Retro asking you know, retroactively for funds for a project that was already done. Yeah, but no, this one has this this has been done. Any questions on Tony's? On Tony's. I didn't see anything that disqualified it in any way myself. It, it looked like it was appropriate. Uh, so if we need a motion to accept it, I'll make that motion. And this is just for Tony's just right for now? for Tony's at this point. So we do a first and floor? It was for 5,000, right? Was that the number I see? Yes, I don't have it in front of me. So yeah, I don't yeah, either. And that's only a quarter of the project total cost, right. estimated total cost, right? It's 20,000 yes. total. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and second. Jan, if you would, rule call vote. Frank and Elmore? Yes. Uh, Hotway? Yes. Nathan Cochran? Yes. Tim Heiss? Yes. Cedar Yes. All right. Uh, the next one then is uh, Delia's, and um, as Brandon stated earlier, this is um, obviously visible work that has been done, but of course, granted, the time frame was done before this um, facade grant program was enacted by council. Um, but on the other end, you know, again, the work's been done. They invested in the building, and and, um, and she's got records of everything that was was done and purchased. Can Can I add something to that? Yeah, please do. Okay, and and this this is just because I know a lot of things that are up and coming with this business. Um, and, and when they're willing to keep investing in our community, I would hate to see them get turned down. They're getting ready to build an event center on the south end of town to basically house 300 guests for parties and events and wedding receptions. That's new construction in our community. They're, they've got plans ready to go for a new restaurant on the corner where the flower shop burnt down. Again, that's new investment. This, this family, this business owner is continuously investing in our community. And, and I would think, even though the work was predating the process a little bit, we were still talking about helping these people out with their businesses and, and dealing with the... Still speaks to the spirit of the program. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I looked at it when Jan said this, and I, but I didn't print it, and so I don't have it in my head. 
What was the date that we passed that facade grant? Jan? October 26th, I think it was the date. Okay. And the completion and date wasn't December. <laughs> What's yeah, that? October 26th. The, the, compl the completion date, yeah. yeah. But we, and, and I, my memory's not good on, on dates, but we, we've talked about that for a pretty several fair months. amount of time several months before that. And I guess the, the only thing that comes up about that kind of eligibility is how far back you go. And I think, here, my view is, is that that the work was being done, because it was pretty late in the fall, so yeah. the work was being done at about the same time that we were approving this after we had talked about it. For, so I feel like that in terms of a, a retroactive that we're well within a reasonable amount that, to do that. I'm not gonna say we should go back two years, but, or even, even more than a, you know, over a year from now. But I think that I think that uh, when you're talking about the the third fourth quarter of 2020, I think that's well within reason of, of that. And they did that work without expectation of having any help. Yeah, with it. absolutely. So I completely agree. My only problem is there's no grant amount requested, and I'm not sure what it falls under for. I thought there was a the, the the requirements we established in the facade grant like maintain historic or architectural integrity to the building um, use colors matching there, there's like we have nine different things on here I don't know which one it would fall under and it's not marked and then it doesn't say how much the grant amount is those are my my two questions if, if, if you would like I can revisit that with them and, and have a conversation with the total project. yeah that's what we're requesting not yeah. nothing yeah. I'm okay. assuming she wants the word but that's not how it works. We don't have the, the council can choose to fund up to ten thousand dollars or fifty percent. Yeah. So what's it? Seventy five percent or up to five thousand. Yeah. yeah, or up to five thousand. Well it's not the required worries, match is twenty five percent. So we can fund three thousand of the four thousand dollars based on that line there. Full facade seventy five percent up to five thousand dollars. They they did they redid the, the full facade of that building, right? Yeah. They they, they redid the front facade. They they basically re they, mortared they and repaired all the masonry. Yeah, they repaired all the masonry yeah. and most people yeah. don't even know this, but they they did the same amount of work on the back. The okay. the lift was in the back of the building for yeah. probably longer than it was in the front. Okay. And and really just as a anecdotal information one of the things that that she's not really including in there is that that they did a lot of this work themselves so what yeah. they're requesting help or requesting on is really just their costs in terms of materials and, and rental and so forth as opposed to they didn't have a they didn't they're not requesting they didn't that expenditure doesn't include a lot of labor yeah that is correct it was all so, done by them so they did they basically did it themselves and so uh, well I shouldn't say that the painting the painting was contracted, but the, the actual repair work they did themselves. So there's a lot of, they've got a lot of sweat equity, so we'd call it, in the in the repair work. So, do we want to table that until Steve gets back with her? Yeah, do you th should we go ahead and get that clarified and on what we need to do amount wise? Or I don't I, have the paper, I, I didn't print it. And I, didn't. I, I mean, I can have the, an answer tomorrow if you guys want to pass something pending, what, but I just didn't talk to Dewey about that. It says full facade, seventy-five percent up to five thousand dollars required, twenty-five percent match. So I think we would do three thousand of the four thousand. No, hold on. Were windows done? Windows were not replaced. Windows okay. Done. Uh, I can't tell in this picture. Was there awnings? Mm, there, there is an existing There's awning over that building, but it was. They just, didn't touch it. They, they didn't redo the awning okay. or the shingle or anything like that. It's, it's a wood structure. Yeah. Okay. And. Are they putting up a sign? Or is there a sign? I can't remember. Well, they would have been putting up a sign, but because the county assisted them with another project, the sign that was going on that building is going to be moved down Columbia Street to another building. So what is going to happen with this building? That's yet to be determined, but I'm sure they'll do something with it. They just, they, they basically renovated the entire inside of the building. All right, very stable. Uh, from what I'm reading, yeah, I agree. 
Jen, if we give them three grand, how are we up budget wise for that process? I think we said forty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have so thirty-five. Yeah, so today would be the first so time. So these been two, so eight thousand dollars. Right. So you'd have thirty-two remaining. Yeah, I, I, I will, will let you know that Dan will be turning in a small one once he gets his side door in. He doesn't have. The, the material here yet and they haven't done the work but that door has to be done before you can open the bar so okay. probably tail end of May you're going to be getting one from group therapy. Okay. So we're looking at approaching just about approaching the halfway point of the year but not halfway point in the budget yeah, yeah. for what it's worth that that yeah. I say we do it. And are we officially stating that unless it was completed in 2020 we will not say, be going back any further. I would say 2020 since that was the year we. Is that kind of been a consensus with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that's when we all started too. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a this good. This all started in okay. 2020. Good so yeah, we're not going to go beyond that, right? By any means. With that being clarified, I propose we uh, grant three thousand dollars towards the reimbursement of the full facade on this building. Yeah, first, we have a second. I'll second. Bob again, I think. Yeah. Yeah. James, you would, we'll call them. Um, Brandon Elmore. Yes. Bob Lay. Yes. Daniel Conklin. Yes. Tim Heist. Yes. Peter Frias. Yes. Okay, and lastly, resolution 2021-R-07, which is the ARP allocation of funds, should also be in your pack on the very last page. Mm. <laughs> oh, can I make one more little caveat? It'd be really helpful if anybody else asking for grants could be here. I agree. I expected yeah, that would be here, very, actually. very helpful in my yeah. opinion. So we can ask these questions to very a person good, yeah. that did it or is doing it versus trying to yeah. play the game of telephone. Yeah, sure. that's fair. Yeah, this uh, re resolution. You um, almost said revolution. That's <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2021 R07 is pretty much to fulfill a OCRA qualification that we will duplicate funds that we use from, that we might be awarded from OCRA for, uh, through the ARP process. So then we'll have, we'll do planning and we, we agree to do planning according to their process. So we can't put it all on Bitcoin? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they don't want you to do it. Bitcoin. <laughs> Any questions? Matter of formality more than any of them. If there are no questions, I would entertain a motion for resolution. So one question. So this yeah. this just means that um, we're planning so that we're not. We'll go through a process, a planning process for uh, our American Rescue Plan funding. Big check the federal government's giving us. We can't spend it on something dumb and has to be planned on how it's spent. Is that, is that as simple as, as I can? That's what I'm understanding. We're, we're, we're basically saying we're going to do what we were going to do anyway. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What we always do and what we're going to do anyway. Okay. I move that we approve resolution 2020-R-07 ARP allocation of funds document. We have a first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Yeah. One last time. We'll call vote. Brandon Almore? Yes. 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 Do we have any visitors this evening wishing to address the board? Um, I do. I just. Um, if you, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't finish. If you would state your name and oh, address. Okay. Uh, Paul Cushing, 815 West Elm Street. Um, the reason I'm here is just because of the, uh, the house condemnations, so maybe I'll come back. Next week, when there's more, or two weeks, when there's more information. But uh, when you walk out of my house and you look to the left, all the way down to Sycamore, there's a house with holes in the roof and 
trees growing up, and the city owns that one, I believe. Uh, we do not yet, but we're in the process of it. It yeah. got an issue in the transition. It is slated. We have two quotes to tear it down as soon as that issue is resolved. Because yeah, it's been very, you know, yeah, a long, long time. time. And then immediately to my, to my other side, there is someone, it was condemned two years ago. Someone just moved out recently. And my wife is uh, basically afraid to go outside in the evening because there is 20, 30 raccoons oh, climbing all over the house, on the roof, inside, outside, and uh, and they carry a lot of disease, you know. Okay. And uh, what address? I'm sorry. What address um, is this? Uh, eight, eight eleven. Is it on the south side of Elm Street. Yeah, I, I, I know where it's at. Is that and on is that on the list? Porch and just watch the it is on the list. It is on the list. Yeah, is that, that's the actually the only one that went to. The What's the address? I, I, I believe it's eight eleven West Elm Street. Eight eleven West Elm. No, because I'm eight fifteen. It's correct. So that eight eleven is. Do you believe there's any responses back, or is that being moved forward? I want the moving forward. Because yeah. I mean it's. Dangerous. Yeah. It's a health it's problem. A, it's a true problem. It's, it's been that way for a long, long yeah. time. And I, I just wanted to see if something was going to happen to it sooner or later. That was the one that we literally was constantly dealing with the lady that would just come to court, pay her fine, and go back and not fix any issues. Mm -hmm. It's been a tedious process to get it to the point that it's in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's on the list. It's fine in court. It is. It, it has the date been set on that? Uh, I think it has. I believe it has. I'll make sure it is. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know precedent on this. Is he, as a citizen that lives a couple houses down, allowed to be Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. As a I don't know if you would want to, but that is an option that you, you or your wife could testify that there are 15 raccoons coming in and out. That you won't even leave your, your wife doesn't even want to go outside. No. And that's not right. No. That's being I mean, held you hostage. Can, you can watch them on the roof. Yeah. Yeah. And they're big yeah, if you want to get what's if right I get here, information after get your information, get your information yeah. that would be. Yeah. If that's not the definition of emergency condemnation, yep. I don't know what. And, and uh, yeah. we could get quotes on that to get that torn down very quickly. Yeah, yeah it is. It, like two years ago, I got a, uh, let's see, a, a code enforcement ordinance, and it said, I think there was a problem. I had a boat in my driveway, and they didn't like that. And there's said, pick up the trash, you know. And I don't know if they came on a Wednesday after the trash guy was here. But now I'm looking at this house sitting next to me. <laughs> well, sir, you're, just, you're exactly the type of homeowner that we want to have in our community because we came to you and said, hey, this is a little bit of a problem, and you took care of it and addressed it. The issue is when people don't address it and it has to get into the court system, it just drags it out forever. So just we, we those greatly appreciate and, your participation. Yeah. I appreciate the ordinances. I don't want trash in my neighborhood either, you know. <laughs> but it just seems yeah, on Wednesday I would have picked up that trash anyway. Yeah. And that hole in the roof is going to be there for five years. Yeah. You know? yeah. And yeah. it's like, what? You know, what am I doing here? Thank you. So, thank yeah. you for yeah. coming yeah. in person. Um, thank you. Yeah. So that would be nice if we get those things here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. Um, the date of the next council meeting will be May 10th. That's obviously on a Monday, that's at 6 p.m. The date of the next Board of Public Works meeting will also be Monday, May 10th, and that's at 1 p.m. I already hereby entertain a motion for adjournment. So, so that first, second. second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Great.